Welcome, I'm Michelle Mentis. I am the Chair of the Department of Speech, Language and Hearing Sciences and also the Program Director for the Master of Science degree in Speech Language Pathology. Our department, Speech, Language and Hearing Sciences, is located in the College of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences, Sargent College at Boston University. And in our college, we have four departments, Health Sciences, which um, houses the nutrition program, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and then our department, Speech, Language and Hearing Sciences. In our college, we have 35 research labs and clinical education centers. And as you can see, we, they are all very well funded um, with over $18 million of research funding. We have uh, a very strong focus on interprofessional education with um, occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech and nutrition all in the same college. We've been able to develop a really robust um, and exciting interprofessional program under the direction of Professor Craig Slater um, that spans the two years that you'll be in the program. So our department and our program in um, speech language pathology is ranked number 10 by US News and World Report in the country. Um, we also in our department have a bachelor degree, a bachelor of science, as well as a PhD degree and a combined MS PhD degree. We have a relatively low student faculty ratio, approximately 40 to 45 students in a class. And students come to our program from diverse academic backgrounds, so those who have backgrounds in speech language pathology, as well as other um, areas like psychology or linguistics, and also from across the country and um, international students as well. Our curriculum is designed to prepare students to be employed across our scope of practice. So in all, in all employment settings, like acute care hospitals, rehabilitation hospitals, private practices, education settings, early intervention. Um, and each student, when you start the program, uh, is assigned an academic advisor. And together with your academic advisor, you will work to um, have your individual needs met. Once you graduate from the program, you will be eligible for ASHA certification, state licensure, as well as teacher state licensure. Our curriculum includes prerequisite courses, courses in normal processes of speech, language, cognition, and swallowing, courses in the major disorder areas of speech, language, cognition, and swallowing, and also some specialty electives. So with regard to those prerequisite courses, there are both field-specific prereqs as well as ASHA prereqs. Now, we do not require you to have completed any prereqs in order to apply to the program, but you do need to have completed those first four field-specific prereqs in order to start the program, so by the time you matriculate. So you need to have completed language acquisition, phonetics, introduction to audiology, and anatomy and physiology of the speech mechanism before you matriculate. Introduction to the clinical process. If you have not taken that course prior to matriculation, we have a course specifically designed for you um, that you will take in the fall semester of uh, your first year in the program. And if you haven't taken oral rehab, you can also take that course once you have matriculated. All right. So let me tell you a little bit about the clinical part of our program and how that is organized. In, it's a four semester sequence and in your first semester you will be you'll have an in-house experience that's in our Boston University Academic Speech Language and Hearing Center and in that first semester you will see one individual client and you will also have one group treatment assignment with a peer. The whole of the first semester is designed to be a very supported experience where you'll have a clinical supervisor who you meet with once a week. You'll also have labs, disorder-related labs, where you meet once a week with just a few students in each lab. And you also meet with all students in clinic once a week. So a very supported experience. That first semester, you also will go out into the Boston Public Schools and do audiological screenings. After that, you'll have three field placements. One will be in a school setting, 
One will be with a healthcare population, so that could be um, a pediatric or adult population. It could be an acute care setting, rehab, it could range. Um, and then you have a third um, placement with either a pediatric or adult population, depending on where your prior placements were. And that can be in an area that is specifically interesting to you. So it could be in private practice, could be in early intervention, a range of different settings. We also have at Boston University some specialty clinics and programs, and these are really exciting and you can be involved in them um, at any point in the program and definitely in those um, after you've finished that in-house experience. We have the Aphasia Resource Center, the Center for Stuttering Therapy, a voice center, the intensive cognitive and communicative rehabilitation program, where we see um, young adults who've had a traumatic brain injury. We have the intensive preschool language intervention program designed for children who have developmental language disorders. And then every student um, will participate in diagnostic teams, specialty clinic, where you will have the opportunity to do an in-depth um, diagnostic evaluation um, of a pediatric client as well as an adult client. So as you may know, Boston University is a research one university. So research is a big part of what we do and an important part of what we do. And all of our research faculty have um, research labs that are large research labs. They welcome students into those labs. And um, there is a range of research that gets done in those research labs, as you can see, um, both in pediatrics and adults, um, and span areas like aphasia, traumatic brain injury, uh, language development, cognition in language, um, in children development, and the effects on um, and how that affects different disorders. Um, there is uh, work done in stuttering as well as voice. As you can see, quite a wide range. If you want to get involved in research, there's different ways that you can get involved. You can either volunteer in a research lab um, or you can become a paid research assistant and work in one of the labs. Another way that you can get involved is you can do a thesis. Um, if you want to have that more um, intensive mentoring experience where you do your own research project that is housed within the broader research that's being done in a lab, then you might choose to do a thesis option. And that's where students in our program have the choice between either doing a thesis or writing comprehensive exams. So what about our student outcome data? Well, it's very, very strong, as you can see. Um, all of the students who take the, the national praxis exam pass our exam. We have 100% pass rate. And um, our program completion rate and employment rate is extremely high as well, over 99%, as you can see. And um, it's really for students who have chosen either to take a gap year before getting employment or to leave the program for personal reasons that those numbers are not 100 percent. So how do you apply to our program? Well, you apply directly to SITCAS, so everything, all your materials should get sent directly to SITCAS, and those materials include official transcripts, three short essays, that's actually part of the application that you'll find in SIDCAS. Three letters of recommendation. The reason we put prerequisite coursework on that slide is because you do not have to complete any of the information about prerequisites on the SIDCAS application because, as I said before, you don't need to have taken any of those prerequisites to apply to our program. So not to worry about prerequisites in your application. We do require an interview for um, strong applicants. So after we have reviewed um, the applications, the paper applications, then we will invite our strong candidates back for an interview. If you're an international student, then you will be required to take the TOEFL exam and submit those scores, unless you have attended an English speaking university and um, where the, the, the language of instruction is English. Um, we do not require GRE scores, and we suggest you don't send uh, your GRE scores um, to us. Note the um, deadline for your applications. That is January 5th. So funding your graduate degree um, is something that is obviously very important. All applications to our program are automatically considered for a merit scholarship. 
um, and this is based on our holistic review of applications. So you don't need to have to specifically or separately apply for this scholarship, you're automatically considered for merit-based scholarships as part of your application. Once you're admitted to the program, you may also be eligible for both teaching assistantships as well as research assistantships. And if you're interested in getting more information about financial aid, um, contact Janet Turner, who is the Assistant Director of Graduate Financial Aid in our college. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can contact us at sargrad at bu.edu, and we will be delighted to answer any questions that you have. Thank you.